Hello and welcome to the Market Advantage Podcast. I'm Big Italy 42. He is Jason Gilbo at jgilbo11. Talking about some pricing differences. Nothing really substantial here tonight uh, as far as that goes, but we'll highlight somebody in each position, talk about some injuries for you here as well. Um, Brooke Lopez, once again, has himself a nice uh, nice price difference. Coming off a huge game um, for the second time now against the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, last night, 47 DraftKings points, 24 and 10 with three blocks. Um, he now has three, three, four, and five blocks in his last four games. The guy, I mean, he's not even shooting particularly well. Shot well last night, but all the games before that, he had three straight games shooting 38% or less. But um, facing off against the Charlotte team that is a good defensive team, they play um, a slow pace, but you don't really have a good defender down low. I mean, Al Jefferson not known as a guy that's going to uh, slow down Lopez. So maybe pe- more people be on him just because of the game last night. But um, individually, I still like the matchup for him here. Yeah, I'm with you there. I mean, Al Jeff is only playing 25 minutes. Not that he's a great defender anyway. I got Zeller there. Um, I mean, no one really to, to defend Lopez. I think, I mean, they limit fancy points we were talking earlier just because of how slow they play, how ugly the games are, um, which is why we don't want to get too much exposure to the Nets. But, I mean, they, they are in a great spot if you're, if you're grabbing pieces from that game because I think, I mean, you were on Thaddeus Young last night, and I think tonight, I mean, we're probably looking at him for another repeat play. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's playing very well. Um, another guy to mention, this is more of a pricing discrepancy play than anything he's – only GPP for me. Tobias Harris, $6,800 on FanDuel, only 61 on DraftKings. Um, it's an okay matchup against Minnesota for him, but he's a guy that is not taking a ton of shots, right around 10 to 11 shots a game. Um, had a couple big rebounding games, but he's just been really, really inconsistent um, recently with his minutes even. I mean, most of his game logs, you look, he's 20, 30, has some upside, had that random huge game against Utah, but... Um, He's just not a guy that I can trust. I'll throw him in some tournaments because, as you know, when he gets a goal in, he can put up rebounds in a hurry. He can shoot. Um, but he's just hes just that guy you look at and you say, I hope I don't have to play Tobias Harris. Yeah. And do you, you remember Josh Smith when he was like this? I mean, this is almost <laughs> yeah. the exact same situation where he has upside for 45 fantasy points, but he also has a floor of 19. Um, that's, so, a perfect, that's a perfect analogy, yeah. too. It's just like it's, that. It's Josh Smith all over again. And yeah. you want to you want to have him on the nights where he goes off, and it's just so hard to, to roster him at this point right now. But, I mean, I'll, GPP guy, I mean, he's his upside is tremendous still at small forward for the price. Yeah, and I mean, at least Tobias is smart enough for the most part to put his foot behind the three-point line when he takes those long jumpers, whereas Josh Smith is perfectly content to just just barely stand on that line and make it just the worst possible shot. So uh, that's why he's riding the bench uh, in uh, in L.A. when they don't really have a small forward. But uh, anyway, moving on to the next guy. This guy is a great play tonight. One of my favorites, one of your favorites I know as well. Uh, Monte Ellis, we've got Roddy Stuckey now officially out. We've got George Hill out. Um, Ellis against Philly, $6,000 on DraftKings, 67 on FanDuel. And everyone was kind of irritated with him in the first quarter of the last game. I got a couple tweets about, hey, let's hope this train doesn't smash into a wall here. Everybody's on Ellis. Like, he's got to get it going. And he did. Um, played 36 minutes, ended up with 36.5 DK points. Um, and in this matchup here against Philly, it's another great matchup. He's way too cheap. He's going to be the primary ball handler. I mean, if there's an obvious play mid-range wise on this slate, it's for me it's Monte Ellis. Yeah, I'm with you there. I kind of, you know, there's the big names tonight, Russell Westbrook, Cousins, but I'm actually starting by plugging in Ellis um, just because you know he's going to give you that that solid 30, 35, you know, floor. Um, you know, de- definitely has upside in this matchup against Philly. So uh, Chicago's not a great defensive team, but they are certainly better than Philly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then. Um, a guy here who just had a pretty down performance against his old team, LaMarcus Aldridge. $7,100 on DraftKings, 77 on FanDuel. And, I mean, when Kawhi Leonard's playing, you were talking about it, I think it was yesterday. When Kawhi Leonard plays, Aldridge is not a cash game option because they kind of take usage away from each other. I mean, it's it's really those – it's it's funny they still say the big three in San Antonio, but really it's the big two and it's none of the three they talked about before. It's Aldridge and it's Leonard. They're both playing – they do alternate big games at times, and it's a phenomenal matchup here for Aldridge um, against this Detroit, or I'm sorry, Denver front court that we know is not very good. But um, at his price, I still think it's a little lower than it should be, but he's not a cash game play, but he's definitely a guy I'll throw in some tournaments because 
anybody as talented as Aldridge in a matchup against Denver like this is a guy I want some exposure to somewhere. Yeah, I'm with you there. And I think, you know, looking at the last game where, you know, Kawhi came back and, and you know, it just hinders his performances just a little bit there. And it's not something I feel comfortable about in cash games. But, you know, looking at the matchups, I mean, we know Aldridge can go off in a matchup like this. So I definitely think tournaments, um, he's a pretty solid play tonight. Yeah, Kawhi needed to supply Twitter with some extra vines in his uh, return. So he just went out, got himself a couple vines, and uh, Aldridge just kind of stood to the side. Um, last up, the uh, point guard price discrepancy. Really not much here. Uh, Kimball Walker is sitting at $6,500 on DraftKings, $7,000 on FanDuel. And he's the guy that no one's really talking about much, but he's quietly on a really nice run right now. Um, came off a 46-point. Uh, fantasy point game last time out 30 the game before that 44 against Chicago now he's facing off against a Brooklyn team that I mean they're not known for their defense they're not known for winning they're not known for really anything good right now um, aside from the fact that they just don't win I mean they're not a good defensive team you got Jarrett Jack up top um, even when Shane Larkin plays like he's not he's not a terrible defender but really nobody that's a good defender there and as far as Charlotte goes I mean Nick Batum struggled yesterday, but you don't really have many consistent scores. It's pretty much Kimball Walker, and then hopefully someone else gets hot. So at his price, especially on DraftKings, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan tonight. Yeah, I'm with you there. But there is one thing Brooklyn's good at right now, and that is getting the Celtics a top three draft pick because we own that first rounder. I'm excited. Keep losing games, Brooklyn, please. <laughs> uh, but, you know, for the matchup there, you got to like it against Jared Jack. On the back-to-back, older guy, um, hasn't been defending well, never really has. So uh, Walker definitely has upside. you got to like that price on DK for just 6500 Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're going to run down a little bit of uh, injury news that we hadn't mentioned from earlier. Um, we've got uh, a couple other things. We've got Ricky Rubio is questionable. He seems like he's been questionable every game. Um, Evan Fournier was sick. They say he's going to play tonight. Um, Chandler Parsons is getting a bump from 20 to 23 minutes, so from unplayable to still unplayable. Um, but the key one, really, that we see this morning, aside from the guys we mentioned from Indiana that are still out, um, Terrence Jones all of a sudden has his left hand wrapped. We were speculating maybe Kevin McHale insulted his mother on the way out and he punched him. Uh, maybe it was, uh, I don't know, maybe he lost a bet and got angry. I, whatever it may have been, no indication yet, so of course it's more fun to speculate. But hopefully he'll be all right. But if he doesn't play... Seems to me that the guys that are going to benefit most will probably be Trevor Reza and Marcus Thornton, who will get a little bit more minutes. But who knows? I mean, we also have a new coach because Kevin McHale got fired. So it's hard to say what's going to go on through rotation tonight. But um, Terrence Jones is a guy that I, I'm a big fan of if he does play and is healthy. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. I mean, the guy's a good player, but he's never healthy. Um, you know, looking, he's maybe a value Anthony Davis if we want to compare soft small forwards who get injured all the time. Um, yeah. But I mean, I mean for the for the matchup and for the price. I mean, if he's healthy, um, I don't I don't know. I I just can't get get behind him right now just because he's injured. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure what that one uh, to deal with. But looking ahead later in the day, probably want to keep an eye on. Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple more real quick. Markeith Morris, Ronnie Price, both probable. You're not playing Ronnie Price anyway, but um, oh, I was. Well, you're not. <laughs> maybe you are now. I mean, because he's playing, but. Um, if you, if you want a guaranteed lock of 4.5 fantasy points, uh, deep, deep pump play. <laughs> yeah. Ronnie price is your man. Um, Kevin Durant is, they say doubtful. Give me a break. He's not playing tonight. Um, Charlie Villanueva is away having, um, his wife's having a baby. I almost said he was having a baby. I guess technically he is, but, uh, Dwight Powell maybe gets a little bit of a bump here. Some extra minutes, which would be nice. You kind of like him as a pump play anyway. And then Oladipo, Victor Oladipo hasn't officially passed concussion protocol but they expect him to play tonight so it seems like it's just kind of a formality that he uh he gets to play tonight so that's gonna be big for the magic as well yeah all right that'll wrap things up for us here find us on twitter at df cafe subscribe to our youtube channel check out the rest of our nba and nfl and every other sport content at dailyfantasycafe.com